Tap Water Beatdown. Mayfly Infestation. Congratulations to all the PA high school teams. Tournament talk. All that and more on this edition of Tackle Shop Live, which starts right now. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Mark, how are you, buddy? Jeff Riddle. Bill Sleek, how are you? Troy Winks in the house. James Hawk. Donnie Matunas. What's up, Donnie? Long time no here, brother. That's old school. Is he getting ready to quit golf and take up fishing again? Or what's hey, 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 hey. I love golf, man. Well, I don't know. We lost him to the golf master. Jerry Ray Schroener, how you doing, buddy? Dan Swagger, Kevin, how you doing? Eric Current, James Woods, Colby Roar, Robert Bretz. Yeah, I'm still kicking. That's good, Donnie. High seas is in the house. Oh boy, let's go, baby. High seas, best line around. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. My name is Mike Acord, and this is my brother, George. And then down here, we got Corbin Gottwald, and on the camera, the big man, Nick Wink. So, uh, how's everybody doing? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, everybody Great. Doing? Great. Yeah, I'm good. good. I'm I've, been good. Tra- I've been training, Mikey. You have? Yeah, I got to go to the Olympics here in a couple weeks. Oh, do you? Yep. Yep. What are you Olympic Olympic for? Shot put. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've been training, flipping a jig. You know what I'm saying? Well, full, full sun. I don't know, man. Just kidding. I, I, I could do the shot put. I know. I, I mean, I've done it. Maybe it's another kind of Olympics. Um, What was that girl that threw that r- world record hammer? I like to do that, man. Throw that hammer thing. The thing is the timing. I know. You imagine where that thing's going to go if you if you don't, if you don't release it at the perfect time. I mean, you're launching that thing. I know. You're gonna take somebody out down there. We right. can do it at the river, right? We can do it at the river, off the dock, off bro. the dock down off there. The dock. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Paul, how you doing? Uh, Michelle, Renee, how you doing? Robert, Mark, Snyder. Hey, what's up, Mark? And Don Roder, how you doing, Don? Well, uh, we got a we got a nice show for you today. We're gonna talk about some top water stuff today. We're gonna go into. Um, we're going to go into talking about some uh, some tournament talk, of course, and and you know maybe talk about a few uh, a few products along the way here. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to say is um, congratulations to the uh, all the PA high school teams. Yeah, um, they they just finished up the 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 national uh, team tournament, um, high school team tournament, and then went right into the world the world tournament and we had representation at both of those um from pennsylvania and they did really well they they we've had some great finishes and the kids did really well they enjoyed themselves i got a chance to talk to a couple of the captains and the captain said man they were pumped up and they fished hard and it was uh it was a tough bite well yeah i mean i mean they were fishing they were fishing uh, lake hartwell yeah and they were fishing for uh the dead of the summer they were fishing for fish on brush piles and out out in the middle of the abyss yeah yeah uh, the kids i talked to were catching them on points and they said if they didn't get them by like oh crack of 30 man it was it was tough the rest of the day it was really tough so interesting location that they would pick hartwell you know in the middle of summer with the kids and i mean yeah tough fishing i kid, don't know the kid the kids showed us how to do it i mean the the winners um jerry broomball and hunter klotz from the central high school dragons Ooh, that's a great team um you imagine the shirts you could make up for that they were they were 100 percent live scope um pulling up on on cane piles dropping the dropping the live scope if they saw the fish they made a few casts 
If not, they Hang boogied. On. If they if they made a couple casts and the fish would come shooting up out of the, the cane piles and chase their baits and they wouldn't eat them, they ran, they ran the final day, they ran like 50, 50 brush piles. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Yeah. The, uh, the junior division, um, same thing. They were, um, fishing live scope on cane piles. If the fish were down in them, they'd throw a football jig. Yeah. If they weren't, they were throwing, uh, the donkey rig. He oh, and, uh, the, the winners of the, <laughs> the, the, the winners of the, uh, it's kind of confusing to me. I mean, I, I spent like an hour trying to follow the flow chart of the high school thing. <laughs> I, at that, 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 I, I don't know how anybody knows what tournament they're fishing, but the, the, the they have the, the high school championship. It's the, uh, sponsored by the, uh, U S army. This is the MLF TBF bass federation division. We're not talking about BASS here. And, um, uh, the winners of the, of the high school tournament, um, they got entry into the Toyota series championship as co-anglers, which is like a value of $10,000. <laughs> and, um, they also got scholarship opportunities yeah. to several colleges right it's off a the big get-go. Deal. It is. It's a, it's a huge, huge, deal. huge deal. And the same thing with the, with the team that won the world's. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a huge day, thing. Yeah. They got they got scholarship opportunities presented to them right on the spot um, to the top college teams that you see in every tournament, and it's pr- pretty cool. the 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 junior division, um, that the, the the local the local squad that qualified there is going to the the, the junior championship at the uh, Mississippi River Pool fourteen. Yeah. In uh, the end of the month, so it's just it's kind of a big. You know, one of the baits that they were using, Sabil Magic Swimmer. Sabil Magic Swimmer, yeah. and, and all the kids were trying to find them, and and, and they were burning they were, it. They were doing searches and stuff, calling the shop, trying to see if we had any hanging around. You know, to send them, send them to them. It's they pretty were, cool. They were burning Magic Swimmers, and they were they were fast walking top waters, the evergreen uh, shower blows. Yeah. Um, played big time. They were all throwing that uh, chrome bullet color and just ripping it. They weighed three fish in, and and the winning teams was doing. They were doing like eight and nine pounds. So I mean, they're they were catching nice fish. Yeah. yeah, they were catching nice fish. Yeah, it was a tough tournament, and and they really did well. They did well. So and and and, and to be, you know, mastering yeah. electronics at their ages. Is just blowing my mind. Well, I just love when they walk when they come in here. You know, we get a lot of those those boys that come in and and they they are dead freaking serious about fishing. And they, they know and they know it. And they and they know it. They know it inside now. And, and they're, they're good. And they're they're picking stuff out and they're and they're asking questions and they're asking for this and they're asking for that and they're rigging stuff up and they're on top of their game. I mean, they really. I mean, these boys are really practicing hard. They're really into it. They're talking and talking fishing, just like we all do. You know, we're just we're excited about tournament fishing. These guys are off the charts excited about it. So. Yeah, it's really exciting. So it's, and, really, and it's really cool to see that. You know, this is on the uh, the, the TBF side. Um, the BASS uh, Nation also has the same kind of program yeah. on their side. They do theirs during the Classic. Yeah. They but- do it. You know, you what's know, cool a, a about lake, it is like around where they're at. Both of these divisions are making, I mean, it's big. Yeah. I mean, there is like, I was looking at the scheduling. <laughs> there is tournaments on top of tournaments on top of tournaments for this. And, you know, they, they, they ultimately get opportunities to go to college yeah. on scholarships. I mean, we know some, some local people that have done that and yeah, it's, I mean, Hats off, thumbs up, I mean, great job. Absolutely great job. Well, we just like to welcome everybody from Facebook and, and YouTube to the show tonight. Um, for some of you guys that are new to the show, you can comment, you can ask questions, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. We'll try to answer them. We'll try to, you know, stay with the, uh, with the content of what's going on. But, uh, you know, you guys, you guys can talk amongst yourselves too, right, Nick? Right. Yeah, a lot of guys can talk, talk amongst themselves. And, and I see Troy Rinks shouting out, people and 
William Bar uh, William Barnes is in the house. Yeah, we we got uh, we're working on our video and audio quality. Yep, yeah, that, that's getting better. Uh, and uh, Mark Snyder says it was a four hundred boat tournament. That's a big field. They said it was unbelievable. The one well, guy, one guy was a captain. He said it was like you get chills in the morning with all them boats out there. He said you just get these chills up the back of your neck. Wow. Well, the other thing about that, boats, Corbin. The other I thing know. about that, you know, going to a place like Hartwell. I mean, there's only so many lakes around that can handle that kind of field. Yeah. You know, the the facility they went out of was made for that. For those huge fields. I mean they said there's they said that there's the the, the boat ramp down there had runway lights on it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know how you you know how hard it is to see the ramp when you're backing down? This freaking ramp had runway lights on it. Yeah. They had it had three ramps. They put four hundred boats in in an hour and a half. <laughs> you want to see the lights I just put on at the lower climb? I got runway lights up there too, <laughs> backing into the dock, man. I oh, mean, yeah. it's yeah. it's impressive. Uh, the whole thing is Good. impressive. I spent like an hour tonight reading on it, and it just blew my mind. You don't think tournament fishing is big down there? Look at that boat ramp. How about unbelievable? How about I mean these these kids came in from all over the country, and then, and then we go down to down to peach bottom power plant and, and put in down there and it's like it's like the it's like climbing mount everest man it's like it's like it's like getting ready for launch a missile when you're launching your boat you're at this i'm not kidding you you're at an angle like this the back deck of your boat's in the water when you finish loading underwater your motor's halfway underwater it's the most unbelievable spectacle in the whole world when you load your boat up down there it's pretty bad and all they have to do is if we get one runway like that would be cool we could put like a flashlight down. <laughs> you need something. That place is I'm telling you. I never, Somebody to run it over. It's never rigid, such rigid a rigid LED backup lights. I never man. and that was like major engineers that figured that one out. I don't even know what they were thinking. I mean, the angles are beautiful, like like the the it's two boat ramps going into water. The, you know, so it's it's beautiful, but you come down beautiful, beautiful, and all of a sudden it goes, er, you know, then you're down. <laughs> down this thing yeah. and i've seen people fall you know when that water goes down they yeah. slip and slide on that thing it's terrible anyway yeah so yeah not exactly uh the facility at uh, hartwell very very few good ramps in the state of pennsylvania very unhartwell just, just like roads man the only ones that are nice are the army corps Oh, they they do some nice. They do some nice work. Properties, yeah. You know. Yeah, and they're perfect angles and perfect stuff. Everywhere else, you go, Army Corps. Is, everywhere is you go, Army Corps uh, parks and 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 launch facilities are spectacular. Yeah, yeah. The Junior Adder ramps are. I mean, all these river ramps are steep. I think they're you know, they're broken up and they don't fix them and you know, just like the roads, man. I mean, it's you, terrible. Saw, you saw Pennsylvania got a shout out from Gerald Swindle when he made it to New York. Oh man. yeah. That was so funny, man. Yeah, I know. I Every, mean, everybody comments on Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, another announcement is uh, the second edition of the Conowingo bass open series is on Sunday. This weekend at five 30 is blast off. You want to be there before that time to register. You can register at the ramp. It's a hundred dollars. Uh, and that's per boat. That's per team. It's a buddy, buddy style circuit. So you can fish with your buddy. Um, it's fun. It's a good time. We had 26 boats down there last event and, uh, everybody had a great time. So you might want to get involved with it. Come on down. Me and Check it out. Me and George are going to be there again. Uh, um, so, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, fish up against me and George, which, uh, it's going to take a little. It'll take a little to beat us. Uh oh, that's a that's a call out. I <laughs> hey, can feel hey, the pressure. Five, 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 any five fish can win, man. Any five fish can win. It's and I it's mean, tough. I mean, here's the real. It's thing. tough down there. You were set locked this week. Oh, you guys. Um, is, is it getting to be set hammers time down there yet? It. Uh, I'm going to say that me and George are going to pull it off again. All right. All right. Like, I don't care if I end up in second to last place as long as I'm one ahead of Setlock. All right. Because mm. we have that side bet going, and, and me and George won it last time. So we did. George is going to start catching some fish. Step up. Step step your game up. Step it up. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to do something, bro. I mean, I fill the live well up. The problem is you come in and call everything out. <laughs> There's a there's a minute in time there where I'm looking pretty good back there. I got five five swimmers in there, and then all of a sudden, I'm waiting for it. I so, start manning the balance beam for the I'm rest waiting, of so, the day. So, I, so, hey, I have no problem being that man. So wait, wait, wait. I, me neither, bro. Yeah. 
are you are you telling George to take notes on the night's show, Mikey? Is that is that what you're saying? I don't know. Yes, I, I mean, I mean, are we I got have no to get problem. Trophy, are we gonna have to get trophies out again and go down that route? And you know, I don't know. I'll run the net. I'll I run mean, the balance beam. You know, just a little help is is all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I put a few in the box for you last week. Can I can I ask you guys something real quick as you're talking about that tournament here? Yeah, but George, yeah, I, you, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, a uh, little bit of an update. I know we haven't talked about it in, in a while. How about the live scope progression? I know, you know, George, you've had some time on it now with your, your I, live in. scope is amazing. Yeah, I mean, live scope is absolutely amazing. Um, I, I mean, it's. You, you 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 can see the fish how they react to your bait um you know which gives you some clues on how to make some adjustments uh you can i mean we haven't i don't think we've had it you where can scan the areas and see see bait uh, it's, yeah you can the you, bait's really you, cool you can mark like if you're fishing a deep grass edge you can just kind of scan out there and and that that little edge of that grass lights right up for yeah, you. Yeah, it really shows you like like the structure and 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 like the trees, especially when you're fishing trees, you can really see the trees. You can see the grass lines. I think that was the biggest thing, following the grass lines, seeing like if you get in a spot where you don't really see grass, but you scan around, all of a sudden you're seeing these big pods of grass out there. That really helped out a lot. I, we haven't really got to the point where we we got the fish, we saw the fish and we caught the fish. Not too many, you know. We caught a couple, but we, you know, it's not like we had fish. George, like George, George had fish, you know, coming right up to his bait and shooting off the bottom up to his bait, looking at it, diving off, you know, making adjustments, throwing a drop shot in there. They follow it down to the bottom, you know. So, um, we just haven't really. Yeah, it's. It, but, I but, mean, there's a little bit of a learning curve with it, you but know? it helped us. It helped us catch fish. There's no doubt about that. Ah, yeah. I mean, you're staring at it every second yeah. that you're on the water yeah so and then the 360 um is yeah the freaking thing is unbelievable yeah yeah mega 360 is such a help i mean you can just spot all of the cover everything all around you all around you you can you can i mean you can make cast you that, can, your drop offs yeah uh we were rock, fishing we rock were fishing, ledges yeah we were fishing this really cool flat with all these ledges on it showed every single ledge showed where the, the busted down parts of the ledge were and where it was more more crumbly and more snaggy and then cleaner edges that thing was just <laughs> it was just I couldn't bait believe it, man. schools of bait schools of bait swimming around Our, we, i mean look we, the, we were on uh, like like the like the the cover the poster child for the for the um hummingbird pictures for the catalog and wow yeah, yeah. it's like unbelievable man it's so much so, so it's, cool it's pretty cool you mark you mark a big school of bait on the edge of a of a drop off for example right where they should be man right there should be fish on them and then you swing that live scope over and, and scope that area it's it's just we wow we are definitely still on a, ma a major learning curve with it we're messing with with uh um zooms and we're messing with uh ranges and we're messing with sensitivities well the biggest or, or, thing the biggest or, thing or that, that i've always said about contrast contrast the biggest thing i've always said about side imaging down imaging you know 360 and now live scope is never be afraid to tweak your settings yeah you know don't don't be afraid if you don't think the picture's where it needs to be you know go up and down on your contrast change your color palette we did that we um, we, we messed around with that out there you know it's just don't be afraid to make those adjustments. Nothing's going to go away on you. I was watching Brandon Palnick today with his live scope, and he had like a black and gray. Yeah, <clears throat> I saw. Did you saw? Did you see on that the, on the hummingbird act? On the, yeah. yeah, yeah, on the hummingbird. That was like it was a totally different color, and it was it was that was pretty good setup. Yep. I, I didn't see that one in there. Well, now you have you know of course Garmin. Yeah, and now you have Lawrence has their uh, active target or whatever whatever it's called which yeah. is you know getting rave reviews and now hummingbird yeah has got their pros equipped and they're going to be hitting the market you know hard pretty soon here yeah well I, we were watching plowniks on there and that and that, that power yeah, so really i mean you, you know you're going to have you're going to have three really good choices um the cool thing about hummingbird no black box so you're going to plug the hummingbird right into your um, your 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 unit and it's probably and i i haven't read up on a hummingbird yet but it's probably going to be helix and solix uh compatible um you know 
probably like a 10 helix on up one thing one thing about it is i don't think you want too small of a screen like i i i don't think you'd want to go on like a if you're doing a standalone unit for like live target or active imaging or whatever i mean the minimum screen size i would think you'd want to go to is a nine inch and i think a 10 inch is perfect uh yeah i mean I think a nine is going to be a little, little. That's about as small as I yeah, think you'd want to go. That's your lower budget thing, you know. If you just don't have the money, I, I you, you would, know, you, we, we, it would be okay. Yeah. I think the ten is really, really good. What do you got, Nick? On the Humminbird, you either have to have a Helix Gen Four, nothing Gen Three, no Gen Two, Gen One, or you have to have a uh, Solix. Yeah, uh, that's uh, all you can. Yeah. Have. yeah, for the lives for the for their live. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's that's the same. I think that's the same with the with the mega imaging too. You have to have Gen Four Helix for the mega down. Yeah, or a Solix unit. No, I have Gen Three. Rob Robert, uh, you, have mega, you have mega. Yeah, I have mega and mega three hundred and sixty and all that stuff in mind. Okay. Yeah. So you can use a Gen Three or, or the three hundred and sixty for mega, mega three hundred and sixty. Yeah. You can okay. use a Gen Three. Um, Robert is saying about what you know you don't try not to watch it too much well you know at first when we first got it we were crashing into trees and was, you know you guys heard us talk about that and, and we just weren't paying attention because it was so so mesmerizing uh the last time we went out fishing with it we used it as a tool more i think so as you know getting googly eyed at it you know we used it more as a tool and and um you know we fished you know we definitely fished we fished we fished with it and used it as a tool. So we're getting better with that. Still got some way to go because we do stare down at it a little bit too much. But, you know, you definitely it, it's the, the the newness of it is, is kind of wearing off a little bit, you know, with the with the with the wow factor and um, still kind of cool. But yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah, I think that's important that you can use it as a tool and not just, right. you know, drive around and crash into trees. Right, Corbin? Absolutely. We all did that. Maybe not. <laughs> I know me and George did. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. Well, we'll just keep we'll just keep doing updates as we uh, learn. Yeah. And uh, share with all you people, and we'll try to learn from you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you can uh, you know you can think up some questions on that and throw some questions at us. Uh, you know, and we'll try to answer them the best we can. Like 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 we said, we're learning it, and we're learning keystrokes, and we're learning you know the different types of things, and we're we set it up bad. And uh, to see what that was like and kind of took it all the way through and set it up good to, you know, and over, over set it and saw what that did and, and then came back in there and we're kind of just trying to dial it into that nice, crisp, nice image. And, yeah. and that's all part of it. Better the picture, the better the fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you know, one of the other things we want to talk about and it's going on right now is um and it's kind of has some neat stuff it's going to lead into our other topic tonight um and that is the first day of the bass elite series up on lake champlain wow um man was that a smash fest the guys really caught him today uh there was a lot of lot of um a lot of largemouth caught there was they caught him on all kinds of stuff there was a, a bunch of smallies but our boy uh, greg de palma he has he had a nice bag with over 16 pounds and he's like 69th place. Now, he's only, you know, three or four pounds out of the cut. Three that's pounds. not a bad place to be three, sitting. Yeah, he's three pounds out of the cut. So, I mean, that's that's coming in with a 20-pound bag tomorrow making that up. Yeah, it's not it's not you a know? bad place to be sitting. So, he's right there. But what an amazing tournament again. You know, these these guys catch fish. I don't, the top, I, what, the top nine are 20 pounds or better. No, yeah, tenth place is nine is nineteen eleven. Nineteen eleven, Seth, Seth, Seth Fighter. Yeah, and but yep. see the thing about it is they had cloudy, overcast conditions, and you know when you're up north and you're fishing for those big smallies, yeah, that is not no the best scenario. No, absolutely those not. Those fish love sun. They're saying the sun's going to pop out day three of the tournament, so those guys can make it to day three. They're going to yeah. I know those guys are, are praying that they can. Because the, the problem with that lake is uh, there's so many three pounders in there that, uh, you know, you need to find the, 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 the big threes and the fours. <laughs> that's a problem when you go to a place that's just polluted with three pounders. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Champlain. I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity to fish it 
quite a bit and uh mike's been up to fish it with me a few times and we've we've done some trips up there i know nick was just up for his maiden voyage and unbelievable fishery. It, i mean it is you know last week we talked about the saint lawrence and how you need to go there well you got to go to champlain champlain is first of all it's 125 miles long yeah, it's it's the unofficial sixth Great Lake. It's yeah. 125 miles long. At its widest yeah. point, it's 12 miles wide. On the Vermont side at the top, they call it the Inland Sea. Yeah. And if you've ever been over on that side when the wind's blowing, <laughs> uh, it feels like you're in the yeah. sea. And and uh, and it doesn't take a lot of wind. It doesn't. It you doesn't. get like a it's a big body. You of water, get like man. a five to ten mile an hour wind out of the north or the south, particularly out of the south. It's ugly. And you let that build for a while. <laughs> um, what did you think of that, Nick? You're going to know all about that. You saw it. Well, the third day I was there, which would have been Monday, there were probably like 15 mile an hour winds coming from the south. And by the end of the day, it was stand-ups. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> it, oh, yeah. it gets it it builds. Oh yeah. And then like an hour goes by and and those waves double. Yeah. And then like another hour go by and they get bigger. And the next thing you know, man, you're replaying the perfect storm in your head, man. You're <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to climb the beauty, them suckers. The beauty of it is there's there's tons of ramps up there. Yeah. So you know, if you woke up in the morning and you were like, Man, I really want to fish up there, but it's gonna blow like crazy. You can just look around up 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 at the top of the lake and you can find a yeah, you could find a ramp up there and 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 launch and and at least be only getting beat up for a shorter period of time i don't i don't i really don't think that there's any real like conditions that will keep you from fishing uh if you uh take the time to look at round for an alternate ramp that has an area that's being kind of blocked yeah and those ramps are everywhere i mean they're just everywhere well look at all the people that that are fishing up there i mean you know that really like it all the time i mean uh who's that hank parker he shoots a lot of shit tv shows up there um p our own Pete lusick loves it he goes up you know, I, th I think he was up he's up for like two weeks this year but every year he he would go up for uh, almost two weeks and run some guy trips up there and uh you know these guys it's just a great place to go fishing you it really is it, it's small mouth it's large mouth it's it's flipping grass it's it's flipping uh it's shoal Pads. fishing it's pad fishing it's reeds uh, you, you name it you name it if you want to do it corbin Shoals everywhere. You never been there? Nope. Negative. You've been all over. You never haven't been. You haven't been to the to the to the big three, bro. You haven't been to St. Lawrence. I mean, I I got some time. I guess I'll go. Yeah, I mean, Corbin leaves geez. leads a very sheltered life. Whoa, yeah. whoa, George. Listen, I got that salt life sticker coming soon, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, brother. I'm just saying. Well, if Corbin. To be fair, Corbin was uh, at. He missed one of our shows because he went to the. Uh, walleye fishing erie i'm up going, on, I'm up going on, back soon up on lake erie so you know he does get around a little bit yeah 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 i mean and, and, and anna oh and anna right you went to mm -hmm. anna and uh then we do our striper fishing down on the, mm -hmm. the lower bay yeah so that's a lot of fun yeah and, i mean so you've been around a little bit Corey. yeah you've been around a little bit but let's let's not get it uh jacked up here i mean anna's a great lake but it's not bucket list material i mean <laughs> hey 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 hey! i've been to the old yeah. chesapeake bay i mean you know i've been I to know. the potomac river I've yeah been to the cross lake you know I've, I've been around cayuga oneida that kind of stuff i mean you know yeah. well did you notice uh, on the elite look, today mike look at mark snyder he says give me let let me know of one lake that is not any good in new york i mean one the of the mohawk one, river one one of them i mean it's just like everything's great up there <laughs> Yeah. You've got you've got all the finger lakes to fish, and then you have these lakes around the finger lakes that are better yet that nobody even talks about. They're little, you know, um three, six, seven, eight mile long lakes that are just killer chalk, chalk full killer of giant smallmouth and largemouth. Yeah. All around up there. So. And that's what I was gonna say. Like I was just so amazed at how many fish are in that lake. Ugh. It was ridiculous. I never I personally never been to a lake that had that many fish. Fish, period. Right. I mean, you you haven't even seen the perch schools up there, right? The perch schools are staggering. Yeah, on Lake Champlain, a, a lot of the locals fish for perch. Yeah, because you know to fill ten, the freezer, there's ten zillion of them. Oh, I thought it was to support the perch restaurant. 
Yeah. Well, that's on the. You know, on, on, yeah, on, I, on I don't know, man. You listen. You're <laughs> a little. You're a little. One thing that, that 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 part of the world lacks is you know, other than the city of Plattsburgh, you don't yeah you don't have a ton of opportunities to go to perch restaurants. Um, yeah, there ain't much going on up there because you're either like you're either in Plattsburgh or you're in the. Uh, the, the tundra of the north the wilderness yeah well hell how it's only what 30 miles or 40 miles to canada hey hey yeah well when you uh when you ride up when you're uh, at plattsburgh you're like when 40, you ride 40 up miles uh, away. the road from plattsburgh there you know it's not that far it's not that far matter of fact the one the one area we fish if you if you uh run it like you have to probably run it now you have to go into canada yeah, if the lake's if the lake's two feet low and you're up in in Missisquoi Bay, and you want to get around the, the northern tip, you're probably going to be skirting around you're the Canadian line. There's like a buoy out I there. I wonder if somebody. I wonder if these any of these pros are fishing up in Missisquoi and haven't have it because the lakes. You said lakes down a little bit. Yeah, the lake was down two feet or so, and I'm not real familiar with all the areas, but that the inland sea that you were talking about mm -hmm. a lot of the guys i seen were going to that upper bridge and going going underneath it yeah and going to the other side which i guess you can only go so far till you hit the kind of canadian line well, you yeah well you, that. well that's how you go up there you go up there so far and then you wrap around and then it's just there's this big point that comes out missacoy bay and then missacoy bay makes missacoy bay over here but you have to run up around and if it's low you you can't really cut that corner and uh because that's I, some good fishing up there too man they don't want you in canada no. So I'm sure they had big conversations about making sure you guys don't run into Canada. Make that make that turn up there. Yeah, you're not allowed to go to Canada right now. Yeah. Mm. Saranac Lake in New York, absolutely love that place. Never fished yeah. it, but <laughs> New York is an awesome fishing state. Love it. Yeah. Did you notice on that on that elite tournament today, a lot of those guys started on smallmouth. Yeah. And then as that quickly, cloud cover kind of covered up on them, you know, then then a lot of them transitioned to to largemouth quickly, and the largemouth bite was pretty good. Yeah, they're catching some four pounders, man. They, they, I think the big fish was almost six, five eleven. Yeah, that was uh, who was that? That was um, the leader, I think. No. Dale Hightower, five fifteen. Yeah, hi, yeah, 515. Dale Hightower, six a pounder. I mean, come on, five fifteen, six pounder. Yeah, six pounder. Um, no, Buddy Gross is winning. Yeah, Buddy Gross is winning. Schmitt's in second. Twenty-one pounds. Schmidt, twenty-one. We, hey, they, they, we were saying Schmidt's going to be right there. He know he's good at that lake. Very good. He knows that lake well. He's won and, there before. And uh, Brandon Palnick knows that lake very well. Yeah. And he's a smallmouth guru on that lake. His fish oh, yeah. just his fish just fishing was tough today. Well, they were saying that he's he's mainly looking for the post spawners that really moved out. The so early post spawners is what he's hunting. Yeah, the for. early post spawners, mm -hmm. and he's kind of fishing his own fish. So that's and he and he has these isolated spots, these isolated boulders, these isolated rocks. So it's Champ Champ. Huh? Champ Champ said he found the uh, Hank Cherry. Champ Champ. Yeah. He said he found the winning school of smallmouth. I saw him fishing a topwater on that big point up there, um, at the top of Inland Sea. No. Yeah. Oh, he was on the New York side, wasn't he? Yeah, in, 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 in Rouse's point, in in that point, uh, and it goes like it goes back in that cove, and it comes out, and the gut, the gut, the, the gut goes through there. That big uh, rocky cliff, that rocky okay. cliff, cliff point, right there, where that island is. Yeah, I think he was right in there. That's a good spot. He was throwing a big old walking bait. Man, Did that, you also notice uh, first thing in the morning? The the all raining. the guys that were fishing. Buoys, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah, we know a little something about that's fishing a pattern. The we, mahi mahi pattern. We know a little yeah. something. We know a little something <laughs> about fishing buoys on Champlain, don't we? Oh, Ryan? yeah, man. Uh, fishing buoys and uh, floating boats. Uh, uh, boats on um, moorings. Fishing underneath the moorings. Yeah, fishing underneath the boats and the bays is good, but those buoys. Buoys are rock rocking on, man. You might catch one off the buoy, but it'll be a big one. Yeah, Richie Hall, you're going to be uh, marshalling up there at St. Lawrence next week. And uh, hope to God you don't pick somebody who has to run mm. all the way to Erie. Uh, Ontario. That'd or be a hell of a ride to Erie. <laughs> Lake Ontario, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you know, you know. if you're a marshal at, at the at the St. Lawrence, you know the number one thing you pack? 
motorcycle helmet. That's right. Full face, full motorcycle, face motorcycle, motorcycle helmet. And pray for a Phoenix, I've heard, right? Pray for a Phoenix. Well, Skeeter. Uh, a lot Skeeter of them guys it. know how to drive. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot of those what you don't guys, want, they know how to drive their boat. What you don't want is one of them <laughs> express boats. <laughs> Unless you have Sims ring gear on. Right. Then you'll be all right. Right. And a, a, a full helmet. Yeah, definitely pack the full-faced motorcycle all right. helmet. All right, enough of this nonsense. Top water fishing. Yeah. Man. A lot of those guys were top water fishing today, Mike. Did you notice? Let's get into talking about some top waters for a little bit here, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask the first question. What? What makes bone so good? I mean, what shade of bone? I mean, you can see I these, mean, see these bone, you know, these bones. You know, like the bottom for 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 those of you guys that don't know, I mean, the bottom, like I I've seen all these guys are throwing bone bone walking baits today and George, Mike, the bottom I mean, you guys know we always throw bone baits. I mean, for a while you couldn't yeah. even buy a bone evergreen shower blow. So, like, yeah, you guys being tackle owners, I mean, what makes what makes bone so great? The bottom, the bottom, the bottom, the bottom, not the feather, the bottom, the bottom. Yep, that light color. Yeah, but there's there's bones and then there's yellow bones. You know, there's the ones that are more yellow, and then there's and then there's the white bones. Um, and I've seen where you know the yellow just kills it and then and that that's the rivers of sea bone very yellow the whopper plopper mm -hmm. uh they're uh, you know they're walking bait the ro uh, rover, rover i think it's called yeah. yeah um real yellow so that's that's one it's not i mean yeah not yellow but yellowish that yellowish tint to it ham that's bone. a ham bone a ham, ham bone a <laughs> the ham bones connected to the river yeah. to sea bone <laughs> you know that's but, and i think that uh it, bone color is really 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 critical on large mouth i'm gonna go get some you know the small yeah. mouth the small mouth i mean the bones the bone works well for them but the, i think the big thing on smallies for the most part is a, got, a light a light colored belly yeah. but you know if you watch up if you watch up you know we always say about the the bottom of the bait if you watch up uh pick your favorite walking bait mm -hmm. if you watch them walk there's a lot of roll to them too so, some, roll, some roll better than others. So, yeah, and so that darker back, yeah, gives you that contrast as it's walking and rolling. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not going to say the color is usually that critical, but there's times I where think, it is. It, 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 right, and I think that contrast, you know, because you, you it's walking, so the bottom, but it's also rolling, so you're getting that contrast, that movement. So I was told by a guy a long, long time ago um, that the back color is what dictates the flash on the side of the bait. So, and, and I always, I always think there's a fellow here saying about the splash at Martin uh, Carberry. Absolutely, Martin. The splash it is bad to the bone. And the two colors that I fish, I think it's called an A1 and an A7. One is a blue back and one is a dark back. And their sides are the same and their bellies are the same. Pretty much. But when you look at them side by side, it really shadows down does. That, that side. And it does. It changes your flash. So it does. I think, I think uh, back color is more important for that than anything. It does. And I think the uh, I think the the back color with that contrast when it rolls right. and how it changes the sides. Right. And you know what's even uh, more important than any of that to me? Is a feather on the on the back of the hook. Well, we talked about feathers <laughs> already, but my God, the difference that a feather makes. I I think a feather on the back of the hook is absolutely huge. It it just and you know you could put um, you can have tinsel on there. You can have feathers. You can you know any kind of any kind of uh, you know t uh, covering on the tail. Now, make, I'm not saying that I like feathers. I mean, but I do carry them by the. Box <laughs> by the mega pack. I got the mega pack of feathers here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these are chicken feathers. And I think the, I think the, the I think the, you know, that, that kind of setup right there where you got like six feathers on there. And you notice when they tie them in there, Mike, they tie them so that natural curve goes out. Exactly. They don't, 
when they tie them in there, they don't tie right. them so that it goes in. Right. Because then you'd have a real tight effect. Right. This, this, they naturally, and there's, there's, they're going out on both sides and they're going out top and bottom. Yeah. It makes like a cone. And, you know, me and you always, always said with, with, with Ed, who used to tie our feathers yeah. for us, you know, we always wanted that feather at least three times the shank of the hook length. Yeah. Right. That was kind of our, our basis there. You don't want a long one. You don't want too long. Right. Yeah. You don't want it real long. Yeah. This is a smaller, this is like a size six here. This is going to go on a little splash it or yeah. a pop R. Yeah. Here's these, here's these two colors here. You can see the difference with about what a black, what a dark back and what a light, light back does. I don't know if you can, yeah, there you go. Um, the one on the bottom is a light back and you see how much brighter it is. It's a lot brighter. The one on the top is a dark back and you can see that it almost makes the whole side darker. They're the same color sides. I think that red mouth is important when too. You, when you turn them on their side this way and look at them, they're the same color side. And uh, the splash. Well, we you know we always talk about the splash as being being a killer, but but there's that bone from Rivers to Sea. Let's see how yellow that thing is. It's real yellow bone. And I think bone. do we have a regular bone? Well, I'm going to show it compared to the sexy shaft with the white. Yeah, it's real real different. Real different than a lot of bones. Um, and I tell you, that Whopper Plopper, um, that Russ Lane, I think his name is. Is it Russ Lane or one of the ladies? Chris Lane. Chris Lane. Chris Man, Lane. That, that guy catches fish on that. That's bait. his bait right there. Right there. He catches so many fish on that. 130, the big one in that bone color. Mm -hmm. I don't think he throws anything else. I've seen him throw a black maybe once or twice, but yeah. a lot of times it's bone. I'm telling you, that bone is, yeah. what, is what he does. So bone is a bone is like a key color. Now today I saw Hank Cherry throwing that bone up there. I saw um Polinick or somebody throwing bone. They were throwing so bone. So you up had there. an overcast Patrick Walters. You, you had an overcast day today. Yeah. So you needed that solid, opaque color. Yep. You know, we've always said on your overcast days, you want a solid color. Yep. And another color that that that's known on that lake. Uh, and in conditions like this is black. I believe that. Um, a black uh, walking bait. And the other, the other thing that that I've that I've learned over the years of fishing the northern waters with a walking bait, there's no place for a small one. No, oh, no, they want big stuff. My favorite go-to up there is like the super spook. They do good on you know colors up there too, George. The the big. Uh, the, the big 125 shower blow. Um, that's that to me up north. You always size those walking baits yeah. up. This is the 115 uh, gunfish. That's the bigger gunfish. That's that's what they throw up there a lot. The 115 and the Sammies, great walking bait up there. You know, you need you need you need you need to have something with a knocker in it too because today was a rare day on Champlain. It was calm. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a little disturbance on the surface where you're fishing and that that knocker up there. I, I'll tell you the truth. Out of all the top waters that I own, the very best I've ever done with on Champlain is the original Super Spook. Yeah, right here. That's the best bait I've ever done up there. That's a big bait. I mean, that's a, that's a big bait. That thing's five inches long. Yeah. That's a big bait, and here's the big uh, shower blow 125. So they're not, they're about the same size. Yeah. Yeah. That's and super spook, George. That's what I call it. One of them is about three and a half pounds smallie on yeah. the super spook. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I like the super spook up there again with a light color belly. Um, I fished a tournament up there years ago, and um, for some reason, I forgot my top waters um, when I was packing. And I, I had like three or four in the boat. And the one I had that had the light color belly on it was a saltwater model called the Silver Mullet. And it was basically, basically, a I mean, it, they call it a saltwater model because it had saltwater hooks on it. Yeah. But it was basically a whitish color. Yeah. Had a little blue line down the side and had a dark back. Yeah. And I thought, well, heck, that's, that's. Doesn't matter if you forgot your baits if you got one of them. You got a walking bait. I changed my hooks. I put a feather on the back, and man, up Whacked on them. Rouse's Point where a lot of these guys were fishing today, Whacked and them. Point all, 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 all
Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. Man, I mean, you'd call up a big fish, and when you'd bring them in, there'd be five, six big fish. Yeah. With point, point a, a row. Tom point Mills. Row. Tom Mills is ch chiming in here, bringing up some bad language. Vixen. Tom Mills, keep your garage doors locked. Because <laughs> uh, they're, like, impossible to get. And uh, we're going to go up to Tom Mills' house and get them all. <laughs> I got, like, two. George, what about that tackle walking bait that they said was I've never thrown it vixen or I, I mean, I've like never thrown it I don't know I don't know what the deal is with that um it's uh looks it looks a lot like a vixen yeah it looks a lot like a vixen I don't know if that if they can ever replicate that sound that sound on the vixen was was mean it was awesome now had a big one knocker in it it is it time. is it's a great bait Tom Mills I couldn't agree with you more yeah um and I might have a couple now, also on the top water, on, on the walking bait, I have a couple things I got to add in before we get into tackle. Uh, for sunny days, uh, sometimes you want something you can see through a little bit, a little, a little ghosty. Still a light-colored belly on it, but a little ghosty. Um, and if it's real calm and slick, the Sammy's a fine bait, but the Giant Dog X and the Silent Diamante from Mega Bass are legit bad to the bone um, Well, earlier you were saying about the roll in a in a bait yeah one of the best rolling walking baits i think on the market to get the per perfect flash out of your bait is a giant dog x tremendous yeah. it has a roll in it while it's walking it really rolls over and flashes you know kind of flashes and straightens up and flashes and straightens up much better than any other and it's it's Bait. it's it's, it's kind of subtle. It is subtle. It's it's a little more aggressive than say a Sammy, mm -hmm. but it's kind of subtle. But you can fish it in super shallow water. You can fish it in deep water. Yeah. Um. I just like the way that thing cuts. A little bit straighter sided, not surrounded like a spook. Yeah. So you get that really. Well, I tell you that that one that um, that uh, the champ 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 is throw, was throwing today. I swear that thing walks side to side. He's throwing that foot and a half. He's probably throwing that uh, that Berkeley one. Jay Walker from Berkeley. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, that thing went like like, and it was going yeah. that far. You just you get to see it. And he, well, they were smashing. Overcast, it. cloudy, mm -hmm. less than ideal conditions for smallmouth. Sexy Live dog scope. is awesome. You need something. Oyster. You absolutely. need a beast up there. You need a big. You need a big old loud walking rolling. Ham I'm roll. here. Come on. Bring it. Kind of oh, time, time out. Deal. Mark. Mark calling me out. That is our new SFT hat, Mark. Look at that bad boy. You can see it. One of them things. You can see it fine on your head. <laughs> Look at this thing. Fire, he says. It that's is a, fire. That's the 3D. That is 3D imaging. Got a little side hit. Got a little side hit on it. That it's our it's our favorite flex hat. Flex fit trucker. Yeah, trucker. Double clicker in the back. Even the even yeah. the uh, little stretchy on there. So you know, if you have a big log log head, you can you can you can definitely get it over. Even top the of that. even the adjuster flexes. The whole thing's a flex. It's a badass hat. Everybody yeah. should oh, have one. Absolutely. Badass. <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, it's a good looking lid. Yeah, for sure. Uh, man. So. We talked about some baits, but I don't think we ever walking baits. I don't think we spend enough time with like the lines mm. and the rods mm. and the reels. Oh yeah, you know. So my, I, I what I like to know is the best top water line that you could use. Three options. You know, just just say for instance you're fishing. Like we're fish, we're going north. We're going to fish some clear lakes, and we're going to throw some some walking baits, and you know we're going to do that type of thing right now. Open water. You know what would you guys what would you guys fish when you're like what are those guys throwing up there for line? Three awesome options. Three three awesome options. So braid. I would say if you went up to the. Uh, elite tournament tomorrow and you watched all 95 pros launch 94 of them their top waters tied to braid okay um 
and I'll bet you a high percentage of them have about three foot of mono, heavier 20 pound mono leader. Mm. The rest of them are straight braid right to the right to the hook. And 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 I bet you you got a range of braid from 30 to 50. Yeah. You know, so that that and, and I and I, I like that too. I like that too. But here's the other interesting thing. I'll bet you a bunch of them are fishing a snap. And they're not tying directly to their bait. Right. A bunch of them. I don't understand that if you if you have a split ring, why why you have to do that? It's a little wider walkie there, Mikey. But the split ring's not tied to your bait. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I tie direct. Um, even on a even on walk my favorite some of my favorite walking baits don't have split rings. And I still try tight. Maybe that maybe that's it because like this one doesn't have a split ring. That one does. The dog X doesn't. That one doesn't have a split ring. The dog X doesn't dog either. Dog X doesn't have a split ring. So maybe Sammy? Yeah, you know, maybe that's why they do Sammy, it. Sammy, no split ring. Sammy, no split ring. So maybe that's why they're doing it. So they don't have to put split rings. I on. like to tie tight with no split ring. I think the bait walks real well. And personally, I like uh braid but i will fish mono i go back and forth you know me i've been experimenting a lot yeah i mean i i would go up there with if like, it was tournament mode like play, that it's great like i would do like yeah. a 12 pound mono honestly that's why you're not an elite i know i mean that's <laughs> that's what i would go with. <laughs> yeah i i mean I, i'd go with braid 30 pound yeah because i can throw it so much further can you can bomb it yeah you can yeah, I mean, full send and uh yeah. leader eh, maybe i mean if i do maybe 15 pound well the leader's nice because the on on the on the lightweight and here's the reason these guys are putting a little two foot mono leader on or even less on the lightweight braid like if you're fishing like a 30 braid or a 40 braid you're talking about an eight to ten pound mono diameter there the the braid floats and the walking baits have a tendency to tangle the front hook in the braid. If you go to a heavier braid like a 50, it's a thicker diameter. It doesn't happen as much. But the main reason that those guys are putting that little short mono leader on there is to prevent the front hook from tangling with the braid, which is a, a wasted cast. Yeah. And they don't like to waste casts. Right. So Right. Uh, Sean Taylor is, is is braid to heavy mono. Yeah, that's a great setup. Uh, Mark is braid, braid, and braid all the way. Um, mono leader, yes. A stiffer mono le leader helps keep from tangling. Yep, you're right, Tom Mills. You and George think alike. Yeah. Um, so, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I've just always been a mono guy. I've always fished 12 or 15 pound mono on 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 top waters i've tried the braid and uh worked well yeah it does work well. and, I, and i've done the mono thing mike you know works well like for the last year and a half i've been just fishing mono well, ever, just ever, to ever fish since, mono well ever since i started throwing um umbrella rigs yeah i'm kind of over the whole fish seeing stuff thing yeah <laughs> i mean come on that's freaking uh chandelier thirty five thousandths wire <laughs> yeah, I mean you're reeling in a you're real I like to call them the Susquehanna River grass rake. Yeah. You're basically reeling in a freaking rake. So and they're eating it, you know, that shows how much they're targeting in on the, the action of the lure and, and right. the, the, the lure is what's drawing them in, you know. I yep. did I did braid I did braid for about two years on everything from my splash it to my walking baits. I did fifty pound braid and it worked phenomenally well. And then I decided to go back to mono and do a comparison. And I've had a lousy top water plate, so I can't really compare it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just I've always done mono, you know, heavier mono. So I'm I mean, I've been messing with braid and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to mess with it. Um but uh copolymer, you could definitely do a copolymer, a little lower stretch. A little uh, more polite to work with. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a little bit lower stretch, a little stronger. You know, you can get those, you know, gamma copolymer, which has got a really nice coating on the outside of it that's tough. Um, that's a nice line. Um, the high seas. That's a very strong line. The high seas copolymer. Yeah, Grand that, Slam. Grand yeah. Slam, very, very good. Really, really has a... That, that to me, is one of the better copolymers on the market. Yeah. And, and it's, 
I don't know what they're doing down there, but I think they're putting the wrong sticker on the line because the eight fish is like 10. Yeah. The 10 it's fish strong. is like 15. It's strong. Yeah. And uh, one of one of uh, one of our pro staff members here at SFT is is runs a very, very successful guide service on the Susquehanna River fishes like all the time. And he's a spinnerbait guy. His clients throw spinnerbaits all the time. And, and, and he fishes 12 pound Grand Slam, uh, the copolymer. And I'm always telling him, you know, I, I don't see the point in that. I mean, why fish a light line? And something that doesn't require light money because we, we can't break it. <laughs> it casts yeah. great. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I, I get it. So that the high seas, uh, the Grand Slam is really, really nice. What's your what is your favorite braid? Now I know you fish like I saw your line bag. There's like 49 brands of braid in your line bag. <laughs> I know. Because every time a sales rep comes by, you're like just about freaking prostituting yourself to get a sample. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you're like yeah mike mike you're like dave Chappelle. yeah you got any pony spools of that braid up in that bag right, right there <laughs> oh man so i mean you probably fished every I braid fished there is all. i fished them all every single one of them well, who do you fall back on um well i mean i am a big gigantic fan now of the power pro v2 the new the v2 super slick super slick i love that freaking line i it just casts like a dream it's quiet it casts it in fairness not, to the conversation you fish a lot of braids i fish a lot of braid i fish yep. I and fish you don't necessarily suffix. dislike any braids. i fish suffix i love it i fished um the uh smackdown yeah and and, and great it's good you got the, the only thing I would say about some of these braids that I don't like about some of them is they're too limp. If you go to these 11, 12, you know, braided things, carriers, that, these carriers where they braid in a bunch of different carriers of uh, braid, some of them get really super limp and have a tendency to throw more wind knots. Well, they're, I think they're more, uh, if I may. Well, I, I understand what they're all about. I think they're more spinning oriented. They are, but you'll still throw yeah. wind knots in it. I'm not saying it, you won't, but not, I'm, it's not the But I'm saying like the like the that thirteen carrier suffix, whatever fished, that stuff is back. I think that's more of a spinning. What was line. that one we we fished a fluoro braid? It was it was like the big thing. Sounds up, like a spider wire. No, drink. it was like the big thing up on the St. Lawrence was fishing a, a fluoro fluoro braid. It was a sinking braid. Yeah. They called it fluoro braid. Yeah. And it was some Chinese or Japanese stump, something or other. And you threw it out and your line, it, it was cool because your line stayed straight with your, with your, with your sinker, like, like fluorocarbon would, but it was braid. Okay. Yeah. Mike McNich Mike McNicholas was quick to the draw there and uh, correctly identified YGK. YGK. Yes. Which is a yes. sinking braid braid which is very very nice for like a drop shotting technique no with, that's that's exactly light. what it was so i fished all kinds of different uh braided lines i mean i really have uh, you know and i i really like the the power pro from forever all around all, every day fishing the all around is that for me is the power pro v2 what okay. about you corbin uh spinning rods for deep water and like anything like that i'm gonna go the v2 but for like Frogging, flipping, top water, regular. I'm just gonna use the four four strand because yeah. I just feel like on a casting rod, it, fat, it 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 handles so much better. That super slick coating. I mean, I, I've had experiences where I've had issues with it uh, with clients as well. Um, but I mean, it has its it has its moments, and that's what I like it for on a spinning rod. I love Cast, it. But casting rod, I still like the original four yeah. strand. Yeah, oh, four strands great too. Yep, four strands great. Regular and, power. And, I, and I'll tell you the one that I really like. Is Max Quattro? Oh, I really like that. Okay, because you're getting the strength of the braid in a thinner diameter. Mm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Yeah. That's uh, so that's break. your walking. That's your walking deal now. All right. So what about your popping deal. Well, hang on a second here. 
because not everybody listening, you know, may know everything about the lines. The one line you don't want to use for top water is fluorocarbon. Absolutely not. Because fluorocarbon sinks for, you know, anybody doesn't know. Fluorocarbon is great line for so many things out there. Uh, you know, the, the, the sensitivity of it's unbelievable. The sinking of it is unbelievable. Everything about it's unbelievable. And you use it for certain things. But one thing you don't want to use it for, and that's top water fishing. It's, it, I, I tried it on fast stuff, you know, where you would go real fast with different baits, thinking that, that I could get away with it. Yeah, like a buzz bait and a whopper plopper. Yeah, yeah you just like, think you could get away with it. And I'm telling you, halfway through that cast, you're wishing you yeah. you'd tied it on another rod. But, yeah. you know, in a pinch when you wanted to try something and you, were, you only had certain rods with you, you put it on that thing and you think you get away with it and it never works. No, it never, it never works out. It, it, you know, so I agree. Totally. We, we've all tried it, um, to make those shortcuts. Uh, so for people who don't know, you do not want to use any fluorocarbon on your top waters. Doesn't, yeah, that, that's work. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so poppers fishing poppers, splash it, splash it's, Pop R's, Pop R's, Rico's, Rico's, you know, all the poppers that are out there and how, that, how, uh, that, how there's times where if you're not throwing a popper, ladies and gentlemen, you're missing out. That KVD, uh, sexy pop or whatever it's called. Splash. <laughs> yep. That's nice. And, and, and we just, you and I just fished a very interesting scenario where the popper was the top water of choice. We fished, uh, a mega mayfly hatch yeah oh my gosh mega mega tonnage of mayflies and i've got it in my notes you know mayfly infestation there was mayflies like hanging on the trees by the bajillions and the fish were underneath the trees eating them. just popping left and right and the perfect top water for that scenario is a popper, popper. style bait because yeah. you can throw it up underneath there you can pop it and pause yeah. it Plus, we're just coming off of a 17-year cicada hatch. Yeah. Right? So and we the kinda... popper was I ideal for that because yeah. you just throw it up there and pop it and just let it sit there. Yep. I, I mean, uh, literally don't move it. Funny story, Corbin. Yeah. An interesting story, I should say. And um, first of all, uh, I'm going to post a picture tonight on Facebook. You guys are going to have to check out the, the slick that me and George saw, these mayfly bugs where we went fishing on Monday. Uh, a mile. Uh, oh yeah a mile long by about 15 18 feet wide major solid dead mayflies big ones big big wow. jumbo drakes like that man yeah. those big jumbo things with their tails that were like that long yeah and when you got into the islands and around the islands and the shorelines and certain trees were black with them the, be the trees were all bent over yeah they were flying everywhere i don't know i thought they died like right away those were the tough ones. They were the colossals. <laughs> the colossals. They were motivated. The tree branches were like pulled down. It was amazing. But a funny, an interesting story. I think it was a Forest Wood Cup event out on the Three Rivers. Mm -hmm. um, our good friend uh, Pete Lusick was in it. Yeah, he was. And uh, in practice, he hung up a lure on a tr one of those trees that had all these um, mayflies on them. And he snapped it loose, and a bunch of them bugs fell in the water. And doo, 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 you know, these fish went crazy. So he reached down, picked up a popper, and fired it in there. And boom, catches a, a keeper smallmouth. Uh, yeah. Which is like really tough to do. Yeah. You know, and then he throws in again, catches another one. Now he's hung up in the tree. So he, so that night he went to the tournament director and he said to the tournament director, Is it legal for me to throw my lure? and get it caught in a tree and then stand on my rod and then take another cast with another rod while it's in the tree. And I think the response was, as long as it's not in the water, the lure, yeah. the lure is not in the water. I don't not. remember the response, but I, I know one thing that was some shrewd. Yeah. Planning it. it and he went and, and checked it out to see if that was legal. And I think it was as long as the lure isn't in the, uh, you know, actually in the in the water, you're not actually fishing it. And and the key there was the popper. Yep, I'm taking that popper. You know? And the other thing that that popper is good for. Now in that situation, George, you're not yeah. working it. No. Well, you just pop it and let it sit. Yeah, you just let it sit there. 
and, and like that, old school, like let the rings disappear. Yeah, and you got to have the feather on the back, right? That's a must, right? Right, Corbin. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't even own a popper without a feather. On. Matter of fact, I got a whole clip over here loaded <laughs> up. You well, know? they they get dirty, I, and you know that when they get dirty and they get kind of beat up a little bit, they're not as effective. Plus, if you're slapping the grass off them, you're busting you're, them up. Yeah. Plus, yeah. if you're catching a lot of fish when you're unhooking them, you're busting them up. So we always have we always have enough that we can change them out. Yep. Well, and the other scenario where that popper shines, and the, and the, and the reason there's a big difference between a walking bait and a popper, is uh, when you're fishing like, and it requires some good casting because you want to like get that popper up underneath like let overhangs on on sh in the shade, and it's really a good, great pattern for later in the day. Yeah. And you put it up underneath those overhangs, and you pop it once or twice. Yeah. And one little trick on that. Um, go to the bigger size. Like if you look at our favorite splash it, it comes in a splash it and a splash it too. And and you know a lot of times we fish a regular splash it, but when you're trying to do that, go to the splash it too because it's heavier, and you're trying to make that precision roll cast. Get better accuracy, and you want to get it up up underneath that tree. I remember years ago fishing a EverStart or Strand series, whatever it was called then, on Kerr Reservoir. And the hottest angler on the circuit that year was Craig Powers. Yeah. He was that he won three in a row. On a P70. On a P70, Rebel Pop R was one of his primary weapons. Now, in that particular tournament, um He liked it because he could pop it and it would stay still. When yeah. He, when and he plus he put plus well, first of all, he's he's one of the best casters yeah. on the planet Earth. So you know, first day weigh in, we come back, him and I were in the same flight and I just happened to park on the bank and he just happened to park on the bank next to me. And he's talking to his co-angler and his co-angler's like, man, you must've caught like 75, 80 fish today. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I sweated out a five fish limit that, uh, you know, took the whole day and I'm thinking, whoa. And, uh, you know, so I started talking to him and he was telling me, you know, about, about that popper and, you know, it's heavy, so you can get it up underneath those trees. Now, you do have to be able to cast. Yeah. You know, and another scenario where, where, I, where a similar kind of lesson that I took from that with the popper that I really like is in the dog days of summer when the bite's tough, uh, say you're on a frog bite and that frog bite goes away, pick that popper up and make those precision casts to the edge of that mat and pop, pop pop, pop, and then reel it in and, and cast again. It's amazing how when that frog bite goes away and that popper can be absolutely, but you need that sun beating down on the water because it puts those fish up underneath that grass that, yeah. and they're looking to like dart out and grab grab bait. somebody who's not, not paying attention to his, right. his situational awareness levels real low. Yeah, and I really like the popper for that. So I mean, that's a couple things uh, that I like the popper. I mean, couple, yeah, couple of my scenarios. Couple questions coming in here, Corbin. Uh, and one is uh, from Todd Langle. He and he's asking, do copolymer lines sink more than mono? No, as long well, I mean, as long as you don't get the fluorocarbon coated. Yeah, I mean, if you get the right one, no. If you get the high seas grand slam, no issues. Right, right. And another question here from D Puck Fishing and Outdoors. If if I want to break into buzzbait fishing, which uh, which buzzbait would I would mm, I start with? Mm. Just to just to get into buzzbait fishing, if you had to choose one, what would you do? That's a great question. I, I know what I would choose. Come on, Corbin. I mean, what's your favorite buzzbait? I know where I'm going. Probably a Strike King one. Strike King. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one, man. Yeah. And so is that accent one, and. Uh, that Picasso dinner bell or the new Picasso one with the squeaky rivet. Mm. That one's pretty good too, man. Yeah. I'm going green fish tackle hammerhead yeah. all day long. That's a that good one. thing is straight up. Awesome. What are you throwing Nick? If he's looking to get into it and he's never done it before. Don't be afraid to use a double, a double buzzer. Yeah. It's easier to start it to keep it up, to keep it yeah, up. At and first. you know, green fish makes an awesome double buzzer too in there. Yeah. The shark. Yep. And what's what to, to Nick's point, um, it has floats on the back of each uh blade, yeah, a uh, little cork float so you can fish it super slow. Um, 
So that's that's a great that's a great call there, Nick. Um, so you threw. Uh, let me see. Sorry, Mike. You know uh, Joey from Real Perfection. He declared this is the year of the black buzz bait. The last time me him and George went fishing. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's bringing it back. Is he <laughs> bringing it back? Uh, James Hawk wants to know: Do you, do you, you know, what do you throw when a fish comes up and blows up on a top water? Do you, do you, what do you, th you throw the top water back at him, or what do you throw? What are you throwing back at him? That's one of the biggest mysteries of the world. <laughs> and, and we call we call that a follow up bait. Everybody should have one on their deck ready to go. It's a crapshoot. Yeah. Usually for me, when they blow up on the bait, they scare themselves to death, and you never you never get one unless they're in like gra uh, thicker grass. Then you might get another shot on. But usually they blow up. They scare it. I always say they scared the hell out of themselves, and they were like, "What was I thinking? What was I thinking? I'm not coming yeah. back for that son of a gun." Yeah. So I would always follow up with a Senko, and you you catch one every now and again. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a crapshoot. Yeah. I, I I'll, I'll follow it's worth up throwing with something on there. I'll either throw a wacky rig or a fluke. But you know what? I believe 50% of the time you're just as well off throwing your top water back in there again. Yeah. I, they, I really do. Another, one. What well, you got another, another thing I, it's always worked for me, and it's, I believe what George says, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. But if you get a hit or it blows up, don't just reel in right away. Let it sit. A lot oh, of yeah. times it'll come back. I mean, that's been my best chance. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They come back for it. But if they, you know, if they don't come back or if they, if they come back around and miss it again, Sometimes those fish just don't want it. They're just swiping at it. So, you know, a drop bait dropping in front of their nose, you can get some bites out of it. But it's just, it's, it's, it is definitely a crapshoot. It is. Yeah. And, and you don't always catch them, but yeah. it's, we always have one ready, man. I call can tell you, I'm not that bait. good at it. I always well, have a follow up bait, and, and every now and then you get bit. <laughs> I guarantee well, you, I'm not that good at it. And for those of you guys that are fishing largemouth and you're thinking, okay, I'm in heavy grass, I can't throw a weightless Senko or a wacky Senko. I mean, don't be afraid to flip as far out there as you can with like a one ounce weight. I have caught fish doing that on a follow-up thing when they miss it. Just because, because a lot of times it's all about that reaction. So right. I mean, if that, if that fish misses it and you can make that long cast or that, you know, get back in super, there. super long flip and you can get through that. Sometimes you'll catch that fish. Yeah. Are so, you just, flipping to the fish when you say yes. this super long cast? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the blow up I mean, hole. I mean, George, like literally like you're taking, you know, you're ready to go flip mats, right? And you're taking and you're just like, or sometimes you even take your rod and you just send it and you and you have to shake it to get it through because of the momentum and sometimes you get bit that way but that's that's one of my tricks for fishing like the heavier cover i mean obviously smallmouth fishing no you're never going to do that but you know for those of you guys that miss frog fish way out at the end of your cast and you're like okay well i can't throw a senko because it's in the mat i can't throw you know a wacky rig because it's in a mat like Try, try something like that with a yeah. super heavy bullet weight, obviously straight braid. And once, once it gets on top yeah. and, it, and, it, and you shake it and you get it through, don't be afraid to pick it up a couple of times. I mean, it, it's something different, you know? Well, I just want to uh, say to, uh, hi to everybody from Facebook and, and from YouTube uh, chiming in here. Thanks a lot guys for, for stopping by and watching tackle shop live. Um, as always, uh, we're, we're for guys who are just tuned in. Um, we're, we're we're just talking some top water stuff here. We didn't want to get really super in depth with it, but we seem like we're getting pretty pretty deep into it tonight. As all all shows go, we just kind of go with it, and it just goes where it goes. And we're having some great feedback from guys asking some great questions. Um, so we went over we went over walking baits, we went over poppers, uh, we went over the lines. But one of the one of the things that I think we have we we don't really get into with any of our conversations is the rods mm -hmm. you know and and how important it is to throw the right rod uh for these different situations and um you know so so what is the perfect walk-in bait rod you want to go with that one corbin yeah um it's for me it's a very fine line um you know when you're throwing a walking bait you're, you're throwing it usually for distance or, or accuracy. If you're throwing it for accuracy, go with more of a 610. Uh, if you're throwing it for distance, go with your 7.2 because I don't like to slap the water. But for me, the ideal rod is a 7.2 medium heavy Zodius done all day long. Um, you can also use it in an X Pride. Uh, you know, if, if you're using more of like a short controlled, you know, walking it around the boat docks or something like that, then that's where you go with like your 610 
medium heavy Zodius, but the reason why I like the Zodius is because of the accuracy of casting and all that stuff, as well as you know the Spyrox being able to launch it as far as you can. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 a great setup. You well, know? you got, and, and it's very versatile. I think you got one. You got one thing where right? you got to throw them base pretty far, and you know yeah. when when you're throwing top water, so you definitely got to cover some water. Yeah, George, what rod are you throwing? I throw uh, two rods. I throw for my for my uh, you know smaller baits. Um, I throw a seven foot medium uh, fast taper. Um, I throw the Saint Croix Legend Elite. It's a seven foot medium fast. I throw it in their Legend Elite because it's light, and I and and I will throw that top water, especially when I'm smallmouth fishing in the summer on the river here. I will throw the top water for the entire day. I um, have witnessed that, ladies and gentlemen, and, <laughs> and we love it. Yeah. The yeah. other rod I like to throw, especially when I'm fishing around bigger fish, heavier cover, is I throw an 843 MBR Loomis, which is a seven foot medium heavy fast taper. And you notice both rods I throw are fast tapers. So you can pretty much insert your favorite brand in that conversation. Um, if they fall in that range now on the medium power, um, I can comfortably throw, you know, let's say a giant dog X, let's say, um, a super spook junior. And on the other end, I can throw my pop R. That's my splash it rod of choice. Um, very accurate. Um, and it handles, that's my range. Now on my medium heavy, that's when I'm throwing the super spook, yep. which which is almost an ounce. Let's face it. That's when I'm throwing like a dog X Diamante, which is a chunkier bait, um, the bigger shower blow, and you know mostly walking style baits. And it's also my rod for throwing like the um, 110 size plopper. The whopper pop. I really like There's that one, 110 uh, plopper. I, I mean, I like everything you said except for, you know, insert the rod of, of your choice. Um, you got to be careful with that because one man's medium heavy is not another man's medium no. heavy. Right. So, you, you know, you, you, know, you got to be kind of careful from that. I, George says he uses a seven foot medium um, fast taper. Now, it's not an extra fast. That's important to know. It's not extra fast. It, yeah, I don't like extra yeah, fast. You don't want extra fast for this. You want a little bit of bend in your tip up there. You want. You want some movement to help you walk that bait a little bit better, but it has to have some horsepower. And their seven foot medium St. Croix are stiffer than a lot they of are. people's seven foot medium St. Uh, 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 medium rods. So they are. You, you got to be careful with medium. So and that's a great point. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, one man's medium is not another man's medium. So you got to be careful. They are stiffer rods. We do usually fish a little stiffer rod on top water um because it makes it easier to work the bait and getting the hook set on the end of a long super long cast it's important right. you know and then handling those big fish well and another trick um with with that seven foot length if you're a river fisherman and you know you want to fish walking bait this time of the year i don't care what river you live on this is the time of the year on those big open flats to throw a walking bait. But what happens on, on a river is you have current. And what that current does, if you fish in a traditional manner, is it pulls a bow in your line. Correct. And it ruins your walking action. So a very simple tip that I will give you is to walk your bait with your rod tip up. So it's the same exact motion. But now, because of that length of that rod and the angle to your bait, a lot of that line's off the water. Yep. And you can fish cross current on those big expansive flats and not get the bow in your line. And every one of your casts is more productive. So if you if you if you fish traditionally and you get the bow in your line and you just say, Oh, well, that's the way it is, like 25% of each cast is productive. Yep. The rest of it's ruined. If you fish this way, the whole entire cast is productive, uh, so you're more efficient. Now, granted, I know what a lot of you guys that do a lot of this are going to say, 90% of the fish come on the end of the cast on the first few yep. moves of the bait, and that is true, but not always. Well, I mean, it's first, you know, always, always, usually always the first half of the cast. 
Yeah. So if Very you're seldom. if your cast is getting if you're a current guy and that cast is getting messed up on you, there's a good reason why all your fish are coming on the end of your cast because the rest of your cast ain't working out too. That's good. right. So That's right. Rob Tip up um, for your current is going to give you a more efficient, better presentation. And then when you know when you're fishing, you know a, a reservoir or a yeah. lake or something where you're, you know, where you're working, well, you know, you, rock tip. You down. can screw so, that up too with too much trolling motor speed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the wrong cast. Yeah. Corbin, go ahead. So here's my question, right? We're talking walking baits and we're talking rods and whatnot. Is there any question or any debate on why you're throwing a rock uh, like a walking bait that you would not use an eight to one reel? Because for me, this is like a prime situation to throw an eight to one reel. Well, you know, I mean, you I know, got, I got no problems with that. You know, an eight to one on top. Yeah, I got, fishing. I have no problems with. I eight fish to one mostly on top seven. Water. I mostly fish seven to ones. I have just a couple of eight to ones, and it's usually seven to ones on there. But I think that's a fast reel too. Yeah. yeah. But an eight to one, I have no problem with top with on top water because yeah. you can catch up quick. Yeah. And when you set the hook, you know, when you have one blow up, <laughs> you got to <laughs> get the slack in. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I I don't have a problem with yeah. it. I mean, I I, I usually like an, I like an eight to one. I, I would say most of my outfits are probably in that seven range, just because. I like the versatility of the seven reel and you know, my top water rods, I call utility rods because when I'm not fishing a top water on them, I'm fishing quite a few other baits on them. Yep. You know, I'm throwing everything from a small to medium swim bait. I throw square bills on them. I throw, um, lipless baits on them. So, you know, I tend to go to more of a seven ratio reel just for the expanded versatility of that, you know that Swiss Army blade, Swiss Army knife setup that I that is what I think of it as. Yeah. Good question here, uh, Andy Whitmer. What about if the water's dirty? What uh, what type of what type of top water would you throw if you're throwing top water? Uh, for me, if I'm gonna throw a top water in dirty water, I'm gonna throw something loud or it makes a lot of movement. So. This is a prime buzz bait time. This is a whopper plopper time. Um, if the water's dirty, I'm never going to throw like a see-through ghost minnow or opaque. Like I'm going to throw something solid, uh, something bigger, uh, something with rattles. Um, you know, That's what I'm going to do in that dirty water. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's really, really blowed out, like chocolate milk, mud, you know, hurricane just came through. And I'm how, dirty is dirt, how dirty is dirty? Yeah, that's, it depends on what question. dirty is. What, I mean, what, you know, what, at what point don't you, don't you throw top water? um so three inches if, visibility if the, six inches availability well, if the water's high and raging and it's cold i mean you know there, there's so many variable factors there i've um, seen guys catch them in dirty water man but the water was shallow right it was yeah all, i mean it was ultra shallow and it was the water was dirty and it was a buzz bait fight i mean and, talking and, and talking was, dirty it was like what the hell yeah, yeah. you know what the hell who yeah. would have thought to throw that well it was shallow well yeah that's Correct. what i'm saying that's the key you know talking dirty water uh, that being the variable that we're talking about, I mean, if I have less than a foot of visibility, I'm not throwing a top water. Really? You know, I'm going to throw a spinner bait. Yeah, um, I'm going to throw a chatter bait. Um, you know, if, if if I went from clean clean water to that dirty water, it turned dirty on me. I'm not going to throw a top water. If that now, if where I'm fishing, they live in that kind of water. A foot of visibility is probably clean for them. So, so, yeah. so then I will throw a top water. So, George, what if it went really dirty, like the flats, or like, you know, you're if you're fishing that dirty grass. I mean, buzzbait, black frog, black popping frog of a regular. I mean, yeah, if it's dirty, toad. if it got dirty, I'm not throwing a top water. Okay. If it got dirty, now yeah. if they live it, if it's dirty, if 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 it's always dirty, yeah, and you got a foot of visibility, that's probably clean. Well, you you can tell real quick. If, I mean, you can get blow ups in dirty water, correct? But a lot of them miss it, and that's the problem with fishing the dirty water. That you get a lot of you get a lot of fish swiping at it because the noise is there, and they miss it. They they just miss too many fish. So in a, a must catch situation, you don't want to throw it. Well, and and. To kind of elude on this, if you are going to throw it and you're fishing dirty water grass, this is a prime time to throw like a horny toad, a rage toad, a strike king ribbit. I mean, something that moves water that you can slow down yeah. if, if you are committed to being yeah. a top water fisherman. Yep. That, that's 
that that to me, but even still, I'm I'm, I'm going to look at a buzz. There you go, Andy. You heard it here first. Get the uh, hand grenades and bombs out and chuck them in the water. You'll catch them. DuPont spinner. DuPont spinners. Yep. All right. So, uh, real wise, uh, I think we we did kind of cover a little bit of that. Um, you know, seven to one, eight to one. Use a faster speed reel to pick up slack quick because when it they blow up on it, you know, you, you want to be able to control that fish and you want to be able to pick that slack up because, you know, sometimes you 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 know, um, sometimes. And here's a here's a point here. There's a lot of people that struggle walking a yeah, bait. Absolutely, they struggle like crazy walking yeah. a bait, and. The uh, the problem is is the slack line that you have between your rod tip and your bait. Yep. If you're getting a walking dog that does this through the water, and then you, then, then you get this a little bit, and then it just goes straight again. If you're getting a lot of that, then you you're not controlling your line slack. You don't have enough. But you know, right. You know you know it's ironic that you're talking about this. A lot yeah. of people that struggle to walk a walking bait cannot walk a jerk bait. That slack line twitch, it's a very similar uh, approach. Right. You know, like it, it's almost right. like guys get so excited that it's top water fishing that you get caught up in the moment. You yeah. know, you're you're out there, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get one. And then you're like, oh man. And you yeah. know, it makes that it makes that wrong turn, or you know, you put you don't put enough slack in the line, or you know, you, you miss a spot and you kind of walk it into the pad or something like that. You know, again, just kind of throwing that out there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's exactly what Corbett said. It's just like fishing a jerk bait. First of all, you use your wrist. You don't use your arm. And second of all, you leave a little bit of slack in your line. Got to have your slack in there. And, you know, it's just boom, 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 boom. Keep your arm in against your side. Boom. boom. And you'll see the bait walking. If it's not walking, your line's too tight or it's too slack. And just be careful with your reels, you know, with your reel handle reeling. You know, you, you got to work that. You got to get that. That that movement, you know, the real movement and the rod movement all together and just practice that and just leave some slack on, man. Just leave some slack and, and uh, that'll walk real nice for you. Uh, that's one thing that we always have to teach people in here is they're like, ah, this, I, you know, walking baits are so hard to get them to walk. And well, that's your, that's, we answer that question all the time. Make sure there's a lot of slack in there, you know? Yeah. You're going to have some slack in your line. You're going to, you're <laughs> going to work with your wrist and actually, you're going to find out that it's quite easy to walk a walking bait. Now, yeah. some of them are harder to walk than others. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you know, if you go with something more traditional, like a like an old school spook or a super spook, you're yep. probably going to learn a little easier because they walk a little easier. Then some and some of the some of the lighter weight, smaller baits tend to walk a little harder, don't you think, Mike? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely they definitely do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, so that's that's kind of top water fishing in a nutshell. Um, we don't want to go get too Mike, whacked out on it. What do you got, Corbin? I got a little something special here. What do you got? You know, you know, this one right here is near and dear to my heart. Oh, the riser bait. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and the reason why I want to talk about it is because it's a little bit different than anything that we've talked about, but it still gives that like fleeing bait fish. That does si side to side darting action. That's like a hybrid car right there. Yeah. So like this is the Jackal riser bait. Okay. And I know we've been spending a lot of time talking about walking baits and getting it to walk and, you know, walking right and, and, and getting it to go the perfect knock. If you guys have not thrown a Jackal riser bait, it is completely different than any other bait on the market. And I throw it on a spinning rod with 10 pound braid. And what you do is you actually cast it out as far as you can do. And as soon as it hits the water, it sinks. So you reel it up, and it just kind of goes like this across the surface, right? It just kind of darts, and then it kicks off to the side. And I don't know what it is, but it ignites a fury in the water, in low, clear water. And, I mean, when it came out, we've been fishing it. and It tends to catch a big fish. Yeah. And to Corbin's point, you need to use a spinning rod because it's got little trout hooks on it. And it flies. I mean, you can throw this thing. Country mile. Yeah. And. I've seen him throw it all the time. It, it, you're like addicted to that thing. Well, and what's crazy about it is like it's it's a bait that's so small that many people are going to walk by. To me, it's a prime bait to cover water, searching for fish. Real, real quiet water. water. Yeah. You know, real shallow where, where a big fish is up there, like 
stalking around trying to catch a crawfish coming out. Right. And and, and it just it's subtle. It's it barely makes any sound. But you know what Corbin's getting to you here. You don't work it with your rod tip. You reel it. You reel it. It's and, like reeling a crankbait in. And and what's crazy is the erratic action coming off. It, it. it is. I can't call it like an S crank because the S crank how it kicks out to the side or the jack hammer kicks out to the you, side. You can kind of you can kind of bend that lip a little bit too. Well, yeah, that's kind of yeah. that's that's a mod. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, what, it's, what's what's it's crazy dynamite. about it is how far you can throw it. I mean, for this for this particular setup, I like a long rod, a seven one or longer. But it's in a hybrid, low, clear, high pressure situations. This big gets. It gets bit, and I'm, that, that's all I'm going to say. Well, I think the thing you said that was kind of important there was low, clear, high pressure situations yeah. and not a lot of current. So, and I don't think you're going to catch like fish on it all day long, but you're, but you're going to catch them out of key areas, and you're going to catch, I mean, some big fish. If it's it, it fires up the school, I mean, it's, we, it's pretty we've awesome. Seen, we've seen it. I've seen it catch fish that no, that no other top water was catching. Yeah, all the time, and big ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. Yep. So sorry to chime in there, Mike. You oh, I get that's it. Great, uh, that's, great call. That's I mean, a great call on that. Yep. It's that falls in the thing. that falls in the department of the uh, hybrid. hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. Hybrid, oh, hybrid top water. Oh, George. Hybrid. Hybrid. We still got them hybrid hunters, right? Just, oh, just yeah. kind of saying. Right. We got them. We got them. Uh, so that's kind of top water in a in a nutshell. Um, remember the poppers. Uh, you know how to work those and the and the lines. Make sure you match match your lines up. Try the braid with the mono leader. Uh, try some straight mono. Try some copolymer. You know, see what you like the best in lines. We kind of told you what we like to throw with them. Uh, and and a lot of you guys chimed in and really like that braid to to uh, uh, mono stiffer mono leader leader. Yeah. So you yeah. know, try that out. And, and and like you said, Mike, you, you you almost if you're a serious student of the game, and especially in the top order part, you almost got to try both. You almost got to yeah. You almost got to take a season and fish braid, and then the next season fish mono, or maybe one of each. On tie a little leader, or maybe have two top water rods like say, my like my top water junkie George. Um, you know, I'm, one I mean, braid, one. I, I mean, there, there's some people that are serious about top water. I like throwing that top water. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I want to tell a quick story here real quick. I like throwing that top water. If, if you don't mind, because I think this is going to elude us to some content coming out, you know, maybe in the near future that we may have to shoot together here, boys. But, uh, I mean, I've been with George a couple times on my boat in the middle of the dog days of summer. And, I mean, my man will show up with eight rods, but he really only needs one. <laughs> two, two, two. Well, three, three. He needs the super fluke. He needs the splash it, and he needs the doggy feather. Yep. And my man will throw those top water baits for five hours, and committing for one thing, George. Well, a big bite, and, and it so, happens. And and that's that's got to be your mindset. Yeah. And 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 that's why we're watching on the elite series today. That's why we're watching, you know, champ champ throwing this champ, walking champ. bait all day. Because he doesn't care if he catches 50 fish. He wants to catch five big ones. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing if you take a spook and you go to a largemouth body of water, like a lake or a tidal water, and you throw that spook in the, in this time, right now, summer dog days, you throw that spook long enough, you're going to catch a big fish. Yeah. You're not going to catch a lot of them, but you're going to catch big ones. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. kind of that concept. Henry Churchill, yes, that's a smaller. That's the zero zero seven R. Yep. Uh, to that point, Henry, the other one is not even like this bait. The other one is a totally different model that does not. It's not even designed to work like this. So you don't want the 009. You want the 007. Yeah, that's the one that the 009 is more designed to be a wake bait. That's why it has a prop on the tail. Yep. Yep. So we got the poppers. Nick, you can stay there for a minute. So we, we talked about the poppers. Um, that's the popper baits. Uh, um, you know, that's one type of top water that we use a lot of. Ploppers. And then we got the ploppers with the uh, with the uh, the paddle tails on the back. That's another type of pop, top water that you'll that you'll throw a lot of. And then you have your walking baits. You got several styles of walk walking baits. You got uh, traditional, loud, uh, more subtle. In the middle, uh, you've got 
Yeah. Big. Call them up. Yeah, you got the big. You got the big ones. You call got the them little up. Bit more subtle size pencil baits. Um, and then you know we talked about buzz baits. You know, as being another type of top water. We talked about them extensively at a, on a on a previous show. Um, we had a good buzz so, bait show, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, yes, we did. so that you know, and then we talked about the rods. Make sure you're using the right power rod. Don't go too light on the rod, and um, you know the length. The guys, you know, guys talk about short rod because they're slapping the water all the time. Well, you know, you could go off to the side a little bit, and yeah, and, and you know, yeah. you can do it. It's important to have a long rod to get the hook set on a on a end of a long cast. And if you're throwing too short of a rod, because I've seen uh, Mike Barr's favorite rod is a five foot six pistol grip. It's all he owns, but you know. You're not going to get the distance out of it that you need. Right. You got to get some distance in the summertime. You got to stretch it out there. Charlie Campbell might argue with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. But he was a specialist. That was back in the day. Charlie Campbell is there, the guy. Look at the pressure between Charlie Campbell's days and the days it is now. Charlie Campbell is the guy that will throw the spook all day long for five bites. Yeah. And he'll throw it on every post on a dock. Yeah. He'll throw it up underneath every cut bank. He'll bang He's it. He's the guy invented walking the dog because he could walk it right around a post. He knew how to do that, right? He was awesome. He 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 was the man. And he, but he targeted he targeted so he wasn't bombing it like. No, he was roll casting. I'm telling it. you, man, this pressured water. I mean, that uh, getting back to that uh, Craig Powers story. Craig Powers fished his P seventy Pop R on a six foot pistol grip right, rod. Yeah. Whoa. But he was there again. He was tight fishing. He was very, casting from here to the wall. Right. Yeah. So, so Mike, why don't we so, take and uh why don't we take and talk a little tackle and yeah. maybe review a really cool product? Yeah. And you know, transition yeah, transition. We, well, we want to wrap level. it. We want to get this wrapped up. You just up. put a nice bow on it for us. Yeah, we want to wrap this whole thing up. And uh, you know, so that's that's top water fishing. And the reason we talked about it tonight was it was kind of introduced at the you know, we saw a bunch of guys throw it today up there, but that's what got us thinking it's about it's top it. water time right now. It's top water everything. So get out there, throw some top waters. It's exciting. But if you I can guarantee you one thing, if you don't throw it, you yep. will not catch fish on it. Correct. And throw it and from now until fall, every time you go fishing. Now until like 39 degree water temperature. What what set lock was catching them walk on walking baits over there? 37, 38 degrees. That's the exception to the rule. Walk well, I'm just saying. Yeah. But you can catch them all the way down to 37, 38. Yeah. You can. The hammer was doing it over there. At three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> when a when a shad comes to the surface. So uh so tonight we're gonna review the awesome SFT hat. <laughs> <laughs> Designed by yours truly, Mikey. <laughs> well, we all kind of got into it. I we, know. We talked about it. We actually the hat we kind of copied was that one you got on your head. Well, that's what we the only That's bad the news about that hat, guys, if you want one, you're unfortunately you're going to have to either come in or call in because we do not have it on our website. God, they'll figure it out. They're going to want this so bad. They're going to figure out how to get it. They're going to crawl across broken glass on their hands. They're going to have. They're going to send their children in for these things. I'm telling you. But you give us Go a call. We'll, we'll 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 bust one out the door for you. Well, hey, all of our stuff's only a we, call away. Yeah. How much are they? Twenty four ninety nine. Twenty four ninety nine. Well, it's a lot of Brody work on them. So well, it's that 3D. And it's a premium hat. Oh, yep. no, no doubt. Plus, we premium. got the side hit. Yep. Side hits there. Got the side hit on there. Got the 3D. Got the double whammy on the back. There's like 11 miles of thread just in the letter S. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's very impressive. <laughs> yep. it's, and it's, it's all done by hand with a woman with a needle and thread. It's incredible. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. That's why it took so long to get here. Oh, uh, so no we, comment. We got that. Um, anything else, Corbin? Well, I mean, before, uh, maybe I'll wait till after. I got one question before we uh, wrap this up after George does a product review for all of us. So uh, let's l let's bring it back after the product review. Okay. A little tackle talk, Mike? Got a little tackle talk. Yeah. I mean, what, what's been rolling in here, George? I know we've been still getting big shipments. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What? I don't get a little song or something. Oh, yeah. You can have some music. Yeah. Give him a little. Let's talk a little tackle. Bow, chick -a -wow, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's right. Right on, right on. I mean, I thought I'd get a little sound or something. No tackle you know talk I mean? in the house. Right this, by the way, this is Tackle Shop Live. Yeah, well, you know. Right. You got to talk tackle. Huh? Right. That's why we're here. Well, we're here. you know, we got, we got, you know, we got, we got to give you the, the, the update on the pandemic 
of tackle. You know, the world is uh, s- s- suffering, but we got some major shipments in this week. We got a rather large Zoom shipment in. Yeah, that's that was, right. That was Zoom. a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a lot. Still it, didn't fill the wall We could up. take about five more. We got a pallet of Zoom in. Wow. It didn't fill the wall up. Wow. But, but we could take about five more pallets. But we're not, Mike, we're not greedy. Huh. Or in a hurry, right? I just can't believe we got some. We got some lose rods in. Apparently, Kevin Van Dam finally got his rod lockers full because we got some of his signature series rods. Yep. Yeah, um, brought that back up to snuff. Yeah, we got some of those in. Um, That's we a got nice s- rod, by the way, for a hundred bucks. We got an, uh, another few few bits of their skipping reels in. Oh yeah. Um, we got some VMC in. There was some uh, there. All this here, Northern Swing put a pinch on our Marabou jig selection, but uh, we snuffed that back up a little bit. There you go. Uh, and the same company that owns VMC, Rapala. We got we got a pretty nice hit from Rapala. The DT crankbait s- series is looking good. Mm-hmm. We got we got we carry uh almost every we have almost we carry every size, but we have almost every size in every color they make in stock, and that's been a while. Um, we got that Spro Gamagatsu order unpacked that we told you about last week. That took a minute. Mm-hmm. And it's frog season, and we are snuffed up on spro frogs, and every size, every color they make, every size they make, we have every frog they make. Um, and also Matt is working on the new snag proof frog selection. Snag proof was bought by American Baitworks, and they have boosted out that frog department into some nice product. Mm-hmm. And Matt is loading up mm-hmm. the new colors and models, including the launch frog. Very nice. Mm-hmm. We got a pretty nice little slug of jackal in. I know yeah. the jackal situation has been grim. Been grim. I know the re-range uh, fans out there have not been happy. We got some re-ranges in the house. We got some gargles. Yeah, which is another gargles. gargles another one of those uh hybrids hybrid uh top water yeah it's like a buzz bait whopper plopper got together and had a love child <laughs> um we got another shot of afco in the hot weather brought everybody out to buy all of our afco shorts and we have the tactical camos every color every size a bunch of the shirts are back in stock today uh, another round of sun gloves Thank you, AFCO. And we got some River to Season. Uh, so not all of them, but we got some ploppers back in for all you plopper fans. But because of the Lake Hartwell vent that was dominated top water wise with the Evergreen SB, which stands for Shower Blow, um, we're going to break that bait down. Mm-hmm. So... You're looking at three guys right here that throw the heck out of this bait. And we got the 105. And we got the 125. There's actually a bigger one. Um, which is in some cases it's very useful on those blue back herring lakes. Around here, they use it for stripers, but we're only going to talk about the 105 and the 125 today. And you got this is from Evergreen which is a really nice uh, bait company. They have a, a, a nice line of baits. Uh, and this thing is awesome. It's, it, sits a little, it sits a little tail down, and when you walk it, it kind of pops forward, and that little mouth right there kind of grabs a little water, and then it kind of p- pivots back up, and it's kind of bobbing and weaving. It comes you know. from a family called a pencil popper. Yeah, it's sort of like a pencil popper. That's a good call, Mike. Mm, you know, so people that kind of from back in the day, you kind of look at that shape and go, well, that's a pencil popper from Cotton Cordell. Well, that's very similar to that yeah. shape, but these Little are like, tail these, down. Are, these are like balance with tail down. You pop it. It levels and walks. It walks really comes easy. Comes back up. It's an easy walk. Again, bait. comes back up again. It's bobbing and weaving. It's going, it bobs and weaves. Uh, three hook bait. Chuck, chucking and jiving. This uh, 105 has number sixes on it, and they are some sticky, sharp 
high quality trebles. Mm -hmm. It does have a split ring. And uh, we do extremely well locally here on the 105. 105. Um, comes in a lot of really hot colors. Of course, bone. Uh, of course, black bone. And then all kinds of other crazy colors. Um, you can see them on our website or stop in the shop here. We actually have quite a few in stock. The bigger bait, um, which I like to throw pretty much everywhere I go, the 125. Good bit heavier. You can launch these things too. How yeah. about it? Oh, full send. Yeah. They are very aerodynamic. Yeah, they, they great, great largemouth. I, I don't know. Do they have weight transfer? I don't think so. I they, don't know. They just fly. They cast like they have weight transfer, I don't, but I don't think they do. They're just tail weighted. Uh, oversized tungsten weights for long casts. So yeah. they got the tungsten up in the old caboose. Um, so they cast real nice. They walk real nice. This one has about a size four hook on it. Hooks are sharp. They got a really quality feather. So we wanted to break this down for you, it, the evergreen yeah, the, shower and, blow. And, it, and it's like the hybrid pencil popper, but that little lip in the front kind of spits that water a little bit, so you get a little spray with it. Really natural. We kinda. whack them on this thing. Yep. Very, very, very good bait. Yep. Big fish bait. Um, I mean, we catch all kinds of sizes on them, Luke Corbin. It's a big fish bait, though. For it sure, is. Too. Oh no, it's going to catch yeah. big fish. But yeah. guys, seriously, when you throw that, in the, you throw that for smallmouth. Well, you know, these fish will eat. Yes, that. they will eat yeah. it. Yes, they will absolutely you, eat these you know, big baits. I mean, well, we throw this all the this time. This is our favorite smallmouth size when we go up north. I mean, the one twenty-five, the super spook. Yeah. Well, and what Just I always saying. like to say about the size is, guys, you have no problem throwing a, a Lucky Craft Pointer 100 or a Jackal Rerange. So why wouldn't you throw a topwater bait in the same size? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's the same. Not, it's it, not it's, out yeah. of it's not out of control. Yeah, yeah, it's not out of control. It's yep. not like you guys are weird. It's I'm telling you, you need to do it. Yep, you need to put this in your box. You need to throw it. Yeah, I yep. mean, you know, that's one of the most common mistakes in learning and mastering topwater is kind of portraying you know your thought of the bait size yep okay you're not the one eating it correct you're not a fish and it's now, a reaction but we are not throwing those on a spinning rod it is all bait casting yeah all bait all cast. all bait casting all bait cast all day long um and it's it, someone asked about walking and easier to learn how to walk these walk they walk easy I mean, real easy because of that tail weight. Anybody can, anybody can walk these. Things. I mean, so we wanted to. We were talking top water today. We got that. We got inspired by the elites. Um, we def and, definitely wanted to highlight that bait. And then we wanted to break down a product and give you the the full, you know, the full breakdown. And uh, we thought, well, top water. Let's talk about a top water. Yeah. So well, good. there's one of our favorites. It's the Evergreen SB. 125 and the SB 105, the Japanese, uh, they prefer SB. Yeah. So, um, for naming purposes, boys, yeah. what do you got, Corbin? If you had one hard bait top water to throw, you could only have one in your box forever. Forever. I mean, this is the top water show we're talking about, right? To fish all over the country, fish all over the country, wherever you go, you can take one. What is it? That's a and, great. I and, love and, this question, and, man. And what color? And, and let's hear from our. Let's hear let's from hear the from audience the on that. And we're all going to tell you ours. I mean, we all kind of talked about our setup, but the only thing we didn't say is if we could have one. Hmm. What is it? And that's not one popper, one walk in, one plopper. It's one. I know what mine is. One. But you know, we live in America, and we, you know, we're not. We we, we ain't living to one or nothing. Well, I know. I'm just saying. But I like the question, and I'm going to play the game. Okay, <laughs> my mine. My one top water that if I was only allowed to have one, yep, I would take the Dino Avino Splash It, big or small, the Splash It, the regular right. one, OG, the, yep, the original, yep. I mean that freaking thing. Not only does it catch giants, but it catches fish everywhere. I've yep. caught giants on that thing. I've caught legit six pounders on that thing already, just sitting still too. Okay, hmm. just throw it in the water and they eat it. And, and, and boys, by the way, Vixen is not available. Yeah, we, we can't say the Vixen oh, no. or Vixen Jr. Right. You know, we're talking yeah. like something you can go out it's and buy. Really, it's yeah. really that would be really hard <laughs> because I I really like the a walking bait too, but yeah, I, I would have to go with the splash it. Okay, so I am going to choose. 
Uh, the Shower Blow 105. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. I didn't well, see that coming either. I mean, I need, I need, I need sound. Yeah. I need uh, mid size. I don't want to get too big because I have to use it for everything. Correct. Um, so it's kind of like, I mean, I, if you'd asked me this question five years ago or six years ago, I would have said Dog X. Super Spook Jr. Okay. But, you know, now I have a, I have a more highly tuned bait for that. So I, I, I can only have one because, you know, Putin took over here and I'm going to roll SB 105. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Corbin? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bring the vodka. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think I am going to go with the dog X. Absolutely. I can't believe somebody did. I, I mean, I the was dog like, X. Oh, I can't believe George didn't say that. Well, I, mean, I, I don't, it, it's not loud enough for me for big water and rough water. Choppy, choppy conditions on big water. God, we catch fish on that. Deal. I know I mean, the the dog X man, but I can only have one. Yeah, that's well. That's why it was hard for me because I that splash it catches I, the hell out of fish. I know Nick, I can make that shower blow catch ninety percent of my dog X fish. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I just hear a challenge being thrown out there yeah. between the dog X versus the shower. I'm blow. just saying, if I have um, to, I, and apparently I do because. Because Putin, Putin's here. Yeah, <laughs> Nick, what's yours, man? I'm gonna go with the Super Spook. I, you know, I was listening to you guys, and I don't want to go with the Super Spook Junior because, you know, George had said about you know a little bit of chop in the water. So I'm gonna go with the Super Spook. It always works, and uh, I like it. It does. Okay. It does There's there, and and so what'd so, you do, Mike? Let's splash it. Okay, so we have three walking baits. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually. Can oh, you yeah, can walk splash. a splash it well, pretty good. I, it, it was, yeah. it, you, you know, it, it was very tough not to say a whopper I know plopper the whopper because, plopper. I mean, <sighs> there's certain, you know, there's. I'm going to take your word for it, Mike. I, uh, you know, uh, it's just for guys listening. There's four baits you should buy and put in your box. <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> <laughs> because those suckers right there, man, will get her done. We'll yep. get her done. Yeah, and, and a whopper and get, and get everything five. in bone color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the whopper plopper is number five. Well, we, yeah. well, we sure do appreciate you guys stopping by. We do. And yeah, uh, we do. Thank you, everybody, for for all your questions and and for all your comments tonight. It was sure fun. Um, uh, Chris Shoplock, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Chris. Thanks Mike, for joining in. Michael Shields, James Hawk, Joe Gallo, Robert. Uh, great questions from everybody tonight. Bill Beck, Beckett from uh, over over in the YouTube channel. Thank you, brother, for stopping by. Joe Gallo's by. in the house. Um, yeah, Joe Gallo. So He's going to get out one of his 13,000 Rapalas. <laughs> <laughs> Probably will. <laughs> but uh, we, do, we do appreciate everything. Mark, thanks for all your good comments. Eric Current um thank you buddy what is your guys consider good visibility on the susquehanna river uh one to two feet yeah that's like really good visibility yeah i i i you can whack a lot of fish in foot visibility really good i like that too on the rising river but uh well, all so, right mike so thank you guys take appreciate, us home appreciate everything thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time on tackle shop tackle live, shop live. Good, wasn't it? I don't know why I did. I was just switching that thing from one side to the other.